see, I told you I'd figure it out and I'd be in, <laughs> I'd be in a horizontal, not that vertical mode. <laughs> um, but I can't see comments here, so I'll have to figure something out because I don't know why I can't see comments on my phone. Uh, will you guys, like someone leave a comment in the chat so I can uh, see if you guys can hear me? Um, anybody? I see six people are watching. Does someone say hello in the chat? Just type it away. Hi. Oh shoot. You can't test this part. Oh there, yes, hi. Molly, Molly, hi Molly. Thank you for that. Oh, there they are. Now the comments are coming up on the screen. That's much better. Hi, Christine from Northern BC. Hi, Andrea. How are you? And I said, oh, that moved off too fast. I didn't get a chance to, <laughs> to say hello. Hi, everyone. Lisa and Joe. Hi, guys. Oh, and New Zealand. Joe, all the way from New Zealand. Amazing. What time is it there? It's like, oh, I know. I'm excited too, Andrea. <laughs> I see you, Parks. Parks, sorry, Parks. It's very small print there. Hi, Sandra, how are you? And Denise, oh wow, everybody's coming in. I love this. I'll give a minute for everybody to say hello. This is so exciting. Thank you for you know showing up. It's a bit nerve wracking going live because you never know if, if people are gonna say hi. Hi, Michelle from North Carolina. And oh, another Canadian, Joe from, that's BC, right? Are you, Joe, you, where did you say you're from BC? And oh, Tennessee. <laughs> All right, guys, so I did a couple of tests this time. So if you were at my first live and you were there at the very beginning, and hi there at Pensacola. Oh, is it nice and warm? It's not warm here. It snowed last night and it was, the wind was howling and it was freezing, ice everywhere. It was horrid. <laughs> hi, how are you? Sage, Sage, uh, what was it? Sagey Mood Ceramics. So this is a very different format here. I like it, but the where the comments go, it's a little different. So don't mind me if I, you're gonna get a lot of glare from my glasses because I have to read out of the bottom of my glasses. So, all right, so I fired this yesterday and the day before. It was kind of one of those, I started late in the day and um, it cooled down and it really wasn't ready for me to open it last night. So yeah, it was like, I had to do it this morning and then a whole other things, I had other things planned. But I have come prepared, there's a lot of refire pieces in here. And I did, I took, I printed off things, all of my pictures and glaze combos so I can tell you what I did because the refire pieces, I never, you know, did not get to see. Hello from Illinois, how are you? I'm in Chicago, that's quite, that's very similar to Toronto. I grew up in Toronto, so. Uh, Chicago and Toronto were like, I don't know, similar in vibe. Um, anywho, so I, um, what was I saying? I fired this and, um, look at that, I lost my train of thought, I stopped. <laughs> Oops, it'll come back to me. Anyways, I was doing some tasks and I think I've got it made uh, on how I'm gonna be able to show you some things. Oh right, I was saying, there's a lot of refired pieces in here, but you didn't see them in the first place because I didn't film it. Um, I, it was right when I was cramming to get everything out on my website. So I even got some things that either I, that I deemed as kind of failures, but I'm still gonna show you. And um, because they weren't entirely a failure, they might've been just like some parts of it that were a failure. Um, and uh, I hope that you will gain some ideas from this. And of course, I love hearing your suggestions as well. So don't be shy, say hello, ask questions. Okie dokie, so right off the bat, what I'm gonna do, I did try playing with this a little, oops, sorry, playing with this a little bit, so if you don't mind me kind of moving it around a little bit, the camera, I am going to, so you can see, and I can also zoom in, which is kind of fun too. I, I was practicing, I was like, all right, I can do this. So this one, so I'm not happy with this piece myself. Now where's the other two, the one I want? You think you have everything right and one of my little sticky notes is missing. It's this guy here. So, so it was a platter that I had made. It's out of um, reclaimed clay and I goofed because I put too much glaze and you can't see there was a, a, um, a leaf that I had done black under glaze and some carving detail. I just put too much glaze. I should have either wiped it back, but it's actually quite pretty. So it is um, 
power turquoise down the middle and then I did some texture turquoise on top. I probably should have either left it with the power uh, turquoise or done just one or the other instead of both because it really covered it up. Then on the outside, this is the sangria. So I did two coats of sangria, which I'm finding is so beautiful. Sangria is from a Spectrum Glaze and it looks really nice on so many different clay bodies. So it's sangria and then on either side here, so I did a band here and a band here of, um, I don't even know if it's, if it's, if it's called Cirrus Flow or, or Cyrus Flow, but that is one of the new Celadon, not Celadon, it's one of the new Flow uh, Flux glazes from Amico. And I, I love it. I, I'm really loving those, those glazes. So this guy, ah, not a win, but I think segments of it are. So make note if you're interested, um, I get a place to put these. Okay, now this little gem, let me get some of this. This is a, did I not bring those out? I might not have. So this was a test tile I did. And what's fun, so let's zoom in here a little bit. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's really sweet of you. So it says you always have the best glaze, glaze combos. I try to keep it, you know, to try things. I want to inspire you guys. And you know, that, that's my goal and also for myself. So, um, and I just think it's such a great way to document because glazing is, I find it's kind of the make or break. It's the end of the, the whole journey. And, and you know what, some things can go awry. So this here is, um, I just did this, I just made a little shape and um, I'm able to glaze in slightly different ways and test out multiple glazes on one piece. So this was frosted lemon, but it was, I have it in the dipping, a uh, dipping format. Um, and I also have it in brushing, but I've been trying to figure it out because my dippings are almost a bit too thick between my uh, frosted lemon and uh, what is it? Lavender mist. So I, it looks like I got it right now. So I've really tried to thin it out. I added distilled water and tried to thin it out. And this is amaryllis on top of it. So that's kind of, I think that's quite a winner. Right? Yes, I know, right? That is such a really beautiful color. And then on the inside, this is um, Cirrus Flow on top of the um, Frosted Lemon. So it's a kind of an interesting, so this was three coats there, and then of course just the dip. So if you were to try to brush on the Frosted Lemon, I would do three coats of the Frosted Lemon. So I think that's really fun. I've got a few different ones in here. Um, the glaze, this is not a huge kiln though, like I said. This guy, so this was just a, a fun piece I made. Um, I had, uh, with, again, with my, um, this is uh, my reclaimed clay. So there's speckle, because I throw it all in there. So there's a variety of clay bodies all that create this. And then I just added a clear glaze on the back. And this is the Pottery Supply House Clear, which honestly is lovely. Um, and I did, I think, three coats of clear there. And then on the front, hi, Christine. Yeah, right? So I had a rolling pin and I created this texture. I then used black underglaze just to kind of create uh, and intensify a little bit. And then this is uh, blue root teal and um, textured turquoise. And I think it really plays well together. And so it's just like a little interesting serving platter, you could, you know, something small. It's not really a platter, but you know, maybe put some cheese with a knife on the side or something. So that's really what that is. But I thought it was kind of fun. And I was just experimenting with um, one of my hook molds. <laughs> so sorry about the sound, guys. I know it's not the same quality sound as when I use my other camera. And that's because um, I don't have, this is just the iPhone. Um, uh, mic so it's not as as good as let's just say like if I had a, a lapel mic which I'll eventually get so these are my compacts so it's I did half shells because I've got some tall pieces in here and you'll, you'll see them in a minute so this is my I didn't bother because what I'm finding is my cone five it's it's they're they're just wrecking my these little compacts so this is cone six and this is cone seven so I got a perfect cone six and again I was using the Camille Hoffman Slow Cool that I got from Lisa over at Finkel Pottery. Thanks again, Lisa, for that. 
Um, and it's amazing. And I'll show you on my controller a little later on. So exactly what the, the program is. Uh, some of you have reached out and asked me what it is because it's, it's hard to find. But anyways, it's giving me a really good uh, cone firing. So that was it on this half shelf. So I just did half shelves in here and in the bottom shelf. Uh, okay. So. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a refire. Yes. Wow. Okay, that, my dears, is, oh, perfection, look at this, gosh, guys, look, so I refired because the middle <laughs> was, it looked horrible, so this is power turquoise on the bottom, I've been, I've been experimenting, too, with my foot, I normally don't have a foot that comes down, my foots are usually, anyways, I'm going to go back to my old foot, but anyways, I don't mind this. Thank you guys. Thanks. So this is power turquoise, a dip to here. If you're brushing it on, it'd be like three coats. The inside is, look at how perfect that is, guys. Oh, wow. So the inside is the Cirrus Flow. I'm trying to get the best shot here so you can really see the shine on here. And that's that slow cool. So this one here, let me get my notes for you because because then I had to add more glaze to it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There's quite a few sheets in here. And I know I have it. Nope, give me a second. Sorry guys. <laughs> I thought it had, oh here it is. I thought it was like all totally organized here. Okay, so. This is what it looks like. Okay, so when I went in for the first glaze firing, this is legitimately how it was brushed on. Then I added more glaze, so I've got, I took pictures of everything, and so I could show you guys. So, because I think it's, it's really important to see how does it, how does it look when you're actually glazing it, and because I can't add anything on to a live video, it's, I figured this would be the best way for me to show you. So again, let me know if this is a, if this is a nuisance, I won't bother doing it again, but let me know if this is like, you kind of like this idea or if you just want me to go right to show stuff and, and you know, off we go, please tell me. Um, but what I've done, so on this, there's two of them and they're slightly different. Oh, this one's stuck. So they're, they're just slightly different on the inside. You can see this one is a little bit more green and that's got a little bit more blue. Um, so this, oh, so you love the idea? Okay, wonderful. I, I, I really love feedback from you guys, you know, so please, please do. I, I'm, I am good with, you know, that sucks. Leave it alone. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> All right. So the bottom is power turquoise. So the bottom third and then inside and the top third. So the inside and the top third is Cirrus flow or Cyrus flow. And then the middle, in between the two, I had originally put um, blue rutile times two, and then inside on the, the blue, on the tealy or the blue one, this is the tealy one, I did uh, one texture turquoise band, and on this one I did one blue rutile band. So it just changes the color ever so slightly. Both are gorgeous. This is a bit icier, and I think this looks a little bit more oceanic or beachy vibes, but the outside. But what happened was the blue rutile, because because uh, power turquoise, if you're not familiar with it, it's extremely stable, doesn't move. I had this line here, and it was very translucent. It looked horrid. So I went back, and I added um, a coat of texture turquoise and a coat of, thank you, Kara, uh, a coat of texture turquoise, and I did, um, oh my goodness, what is it called? It's on here. Ah, da, da, da. Cenote. So I added, you can see here, I've added just in the middle, there. And that gave me this gorgeous finish. I wish I had a picture of what it looked like before in between the firings, but I do not. So I'm just going to have to knock this off the foot and then give it a good grinding. This is one of the 
the cookies I made, this is one of the uh, ones I did with the, from a slab. So you can see it's a little bit wobbly, but it still works perfectly fine. So I will snap that off and grind it down. So two new mugs ready to go. And, ooh, this one didn't turn out. That's not good. Okay, this one can hold on me. Bummer. Sometimes, you know what, second firings, Sorry. Oh, thank you. Am I, am I going too fast? <laughs> am I, like, I have a tendency when I'm nervous to talk really fast. So I will try to slow it down a little bit. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that. You can see, ooh, bummer. Unfortunately, the color, that's, that is just the sangria, which is, is um, unfortunate that you got the pinholes. It is beautiful, Dawn, but you know what? You can't sell it. It's not food safe. So I, you know what, sometimes when you refire a piece, it doesn't always work. On the outside, this is um, a little bit of the sangria on the, on the rim up to here. And this was River Birch. How gorgeous. I just love that melted, but look at how perfect. The outside is just got this gorgeous shine. And really, other than the little grind there, because... It had, okay, so it had run really far off the bottom on the first fire, and I knew it was gonna run more. So I had ground it down a little bit because it had shipped, and I was hoping the glaze would fill that in. It came down somewhat, but it didn't completely fill that little bit in. Don't mind my horrid nails here. <laughs> but you can see the outside, perfect. Inside, not so much. I may try firing it again just to see for kicks and giggles. Oh, you just bought River Birch? Oh, you're gonna love it. I use it so much. All of the new fluxes, well, I've only used River Birch. Um, I've used, sorry, River Birch, the, the Cirrus Flow Flux Blossom, and uh, I think that's it. And oh, they are so much fun. They are, they are just so, look at that. Like they, they play so nice with so many other glazes. Anywho. So that one, maybe, we'll see if I refire it again. Um, this guy was a refire from a long time ago. Oh, okay, so this is when a refire works. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's matte, but this was from my old kiln, and um, you know I was having a lot of struggles with it, and this had a lot of pinholes, but it is now free of pinholes. It's perfect, and this was, um, I don't even know what it was actually, because it was so long ago. It was sitting in my garage, honestly, since summertime. <laughs> uh, you love that. Um, so Andrea says, I love that. Oh, it's fading away. Can't read it. Oof. You could use it as candle. Okay. Yeah, as a candle for a flower part. You're right. You're absolutely right. That's that's true. I, you know, I gotta, you know, not um, uh, disregard that. So, but this, I don't know what this is. I think this is honey flux. Oh boy, because I don't have it written down. I think this is Honey Flux with River Birch. I think. Oh, it cracked. Okay, sometimes that'll happen. See that? Right there. I love your bright color choices. I've been pretty rustic. I'm gonna change my ways. <laughs> I know I you know what? I love that. I like doing things that are like um sometimes neutral on the outside and then bam, a color inside or so I just, you know, I don't know. And especially heading into winter, I, I'm i not a winter girl, okay? Just so you know. <laughs> but now this guy here, I, I, I'm not sure. If I, if I figure it out, I will post it on Instagram. So be sure to follow me on Instagram. If you're not doing so, be sure to sign up there because um, I do post things, you know, especially when I'm doing sales and so forth. Wow. Okay, so this one, oh, I got a little bit more pitting in here too. I just put this back in. I didn't add any more glaze. Darn it. See, sometimes, sometimes, I don't know if you can see that. Where are the steps? Oh, sorry. What are the steps you have to take to refire? Okay, so Michelle, what are the steps I have? Okay, so it depends. Um, when I refire, let me do this so you're not just... Let's do this. It looks like watermelon. <laughs> it does too, doesn't it? All right, let me do that. Um, okay. So the steps to refire, it all depends on why you're refiring. So 
there are times like if maybe maybe you're refining because you've got too much glaze on your pot or you've got like lots of pinholes or something um it just didn't it didn't it didn't get enough temperature so therefore i might just put it right back in the kiln and refire um if i'm trying to correct something then i will add new glaze or more glaze to it thank you i know right it's kind of fun I even did a little underglaze on the bottom. So this was my go, sorry, I'm gonna come back to your question there. This is the, the bottom is, I, I did um, when I was trimming it, it was a really thin bottom and I was like, ooh, oops. Um, so I rolled out and I had this, this roller with the hearts, it's an MKM roller. And I actually added a, a slab to the bottom and gave myself a little foot. <laughs> it saved it. <laughs> and then I did underglaze, underglaze on it. My most beautiful has pits, I just, Keep it for decor. Maybe I should just try. You could, exactly. So, I mean, it all depends. I mean, sometimes we're so like, ooh, because you know what? You can refire it and get worse results. Trust me, it's happened. If you watch some of my videos, I have a, I have a box, my box of doom, and things go up in, and then end up in there. Um, there are times where I'm just like, you know what? I got nothing to lose. I'm just going to try refiring it. So yes, I may put it in the kiln again, um, but you have to remember, some glazes burn out. It's a whole trial and error. Some glazes burn out, um, meaning they start to lose their color, their vibrancy, and you can get like all of a sudden really ugly. Um, and as the more you're doing it, the more you know, and then you may either add more glaze as a result to help counteract that. Um, but just know that, and when adding new glaze, it all depends. Sometimes I use hairspray, sometimes I just brush it on, and then I have a heat gun to help it dry because the thing is the piece is already vitrified and so glaze doesn't like to stick to it. So you have to find a means to stick it. Um, but there, it all depends on why you're reglazing, whether you're gonna add more glaze or just put pop it right back in. So you can do that. I hope that answered your question. Um, oh, right, this one. So this was sangria and it was um, on the bottom, it was, I did a light band of, this was I think textured turquoise, but I didn't use a lot and that's why it's so uber thin here. And then I did, um, what's my call it? Cenote. And you can see that. And I did textured turquoise over the cenote and it's, it's pulling all those little um, beads and so forth. So the sangria gives you this lovely watermelon do you add more glaze when there are pits sometimes <laughs> i wish there was concrete answers kara <laughs> i mean the thing is there are times i might go in and i like i have a piece in here that i went in and i ground it out i dremeled out i had like some weird defect i don't know what it was it was like this it was like this little white chunk and so i you know i ground it out and then i added glaze just to that little spot and refired it. So we'll see how it turned out, um, if, it, if it improved the, the situation. Um, but yeah, there, there's, I, you know what, there's, we want black and white answers and there's, there's just too many variables because it's all chemistry. It's all about what's happening in the kiln with the heat and your clay body. Some clay bodies don't like to be refired. Um, and you know, you can get cracking because it, it's designed to get to cone six. So, okay, my clays, is, some of them are designed, to, they're not designed to really surpass it. And so once you start firing it twice, you have to stop thinking of cone as a temperature necessarily. There's more to it. It is a heat work variable. So it's about the amount of heat over time that gives your clay body the work. So you have a Dremel, which um, would wash uh, out old pits. Sorry, I'm coming. Oh. <laughs> wash out old pits. I'm coming for you. Yes, and you know what? I have. I should do a video because I've got some new goodies that I've been using when I'm dremeling, and it's pretty awesome. Um, uh, so I have some different different bits that get right in there, and and um, I got most of them on Amazon, and they're they're quite they're accessible. Um, but yeah, you you'd be amazed on. Um, ah, okay, so. Who was it? Oh, I wish I could remember who. Oh, I should have looked beforehand. I hope you're watching whoever you are. You sent me a link to, um, oh my goodness, I can't remember what that lady's name is. And she's in Australia. She does all those molds, the mystery molds video. And uh, anyways, 
they, someone sent me a link to one of her videos where she was using um, wax on all of her little, um, what's we call it? Stilts, because I don't usually use stilts because I don't like the little pit pricks on the bottom. So I did it, I put wax on it. Let's see, oh. Wow, it really did work. Okay. Oh, okay. I normally don't like the bottom. You can, because this is also speckled clay. Let's just see if I can get this to, let me zoom it. Can you, I mean, you can barely make out these little flecks. Like there's one there, there's one there. I can't really see the one over here. The, the bottom of the pot is, okay. I would do this more often now. Thank you. So. So this, um, I cannot remember her name for the life of me. She's got a gazillion followers and everything. Um, you probably all know who she is. And if you do, what it, someone, someone messaged who it is. Um, anyways, so she got, someone sent her a, a, a tip to put wax. So I literally was out here dribbling wax resist on here and putting it in my kill going, how does this, Shelby, that's it, Kara, thank you, yes. So I put wax on here and then elevated my pieces and it works, guys. Cause I usually don't like it because it gives horrendous pits. I've got some others in here, so we'll see how it does, if it really did work well on all the pieces. But wow, okay, I could do that more often. Oh, someone left a message and I missed it. I'm sorry, I didn't see that. It's hard when you're doing it all by yourself. <laughs> I got my head in my kiln and, and whatnot. So ah, I do my best, I do my best. Okay, if you can see my rig up here, it kind of requires me to <laughs> walk around. All right, so that was another half shell. And now, okay, I'm a bit nervous here. Uh, oh, oh, okay, I'm happy. From up here, I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm very, very, very happy. Yes, and I did put my couple packs. Okay, oh, I was talking about heat over time. So remember that it's not, heat, you know, if you keep putting your piece in, it's getting more heat work. And it will, it, it takes out even more, more like the moisture, it becomes brittle. Um, and sometimes it can lead to cracking and so forth. So even in, you know, you or you get other adverse reactions, glazes don't always like to be fired uh, too many times. So trial and error. Okay, cone pack. This is six and that's seven. So she was a little bit shy of a six. So this is um, my go. I made this a long time ago, but it's my go based off of Hobble Creek Pottery. If you, I mean, I'm sure you all watch it. She's done many, 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 um, like the notes. And I'm not a big hand builder, but I was experimenting with my girlfriend. She's my bestie and she loves Santa's. So I made this. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I thought it turned out all right. So this is my little Santa. And I'm gonna be giving this to her. And this is fire brick. This Amico's fire brick. And I did three coats of the fire brick on his little, uh, Santa's little cape here. That is just river birch. And then I did up here on his little furry Thing. I actually made a texture, you can see, I use, and in his beard, I was using um, the, uh, what are they called, designer liner in the white, and I made little, because it actually gives it a little bit of a raised edge, so I did little ticks and so forth, and then I ended up putting on um, winter wood, so I did winter wood there, and in his beard, I added the designer liner just to kind of give, again, some texture. I used... Um, a mixture on the stroke and coat, pink and white, just to give his nose a little bit of a pink hue. And, and then I think I did flux blossom on top to make it shiny. <laughs> so, and actually I was worried he was gonna, you know, be bright, <laughs> bright pink. And he'd be looking like he was, you know, drunk Santa. Um, and yeah, he turned out pretty good. I did just flux blossom on his face there, but uh, <laughs> that was my go. So that's, that's a Christmas gift. Now, I know I have to stick the notes for this one, and now you think, you can see all my papers. Oh, here it is, River Birch. Okay, another go at hand building. So this 
was a Christmas tree that I made. So it's going to be one of those luminaries. So it's, let's hope it comes off its cookie. Oh, good. It did. Okay. So I glazed inside. And that is just, I poured glacier. So that's, gla I don't know, oh, it's hard to see. So I poured glacier, uh, which is an amico. <laughs> I put it on do not disturb. I did river birch on the whole thing times two. And then birch, which is a mako, I did in random splotches all over. I didn't take a picture. Random splotches times two. Um, and then I did it very thick at the bottom. So the bottom I did uh, two inches, so it was just solid uh, birch. And that's it, that's what's on here. And then what I've gotta do, I've still gotta get it back in the kiln again, I'm gonna put gold and I have, um, I have the premium gold and I also have the white gold luster. So I'm gonna put that on all of these little baubles. Do you think I should? Let me know, what do you think? Tell me in the, in, you know, in the, in the chat or in the comments, do you think I should put, uh, luster on here um so what i did when i was making it so i did the shape and then with my extruder i extruded the the thin piece yes you do okay do it do it okay all right i'm gonna do it um i did these like the thin pieces um gold okay yeah that's what i was thinking i thought the gold because it would just offset this earthiness right so okay i'm gonna do it that means I gotta get it in the kiln like ASAP. So I'm gonna be doing this tomorrow, get it in the kiln. At least it's not a long fire. <laughs> um, I'm hosting Christmas, so I, I really gotta get my tail in action. So I'm gonna do that, and then I've got like all those little fairy lights. Instead of a candle, I'm just gonna fill it with fairy lights. I think it'll be really fun. Centerpiece, this is for me. <laughs> um, all right, all right. Okay, remember I was telling you, I was having some issues with lavender mist. Okay, it looks a lot better. Okay, I'm happy with much, I might even add a little bit more water. It was so thick. I'm gonna show you some of, um, of the fails because you can see at least now it's shiny. Try to get the, the color there, I hope, yeah. Trying to get the glare, but so you can see that it's got a nice, a good shine. So I have really had to dilute it by kind of by eye. Um, and then again, I did amaryllis. So I just did one coat of the amaryllis. That's actually kind of fun. So lavender mist, Mako. And that was a dipping glaze. I have it brushing as well, but dipping. And then I did just one coat of the amaryllis. So if you did two coats, you're gonna get more of that color. And then underneath, that was the cirrus flow. Ooh, look how bright that went, wowza. So that's cirrus flow on the uh, um, lavender mist. So I'm gonna show you where my lavender mist was. Okay, this is a, a, an epic fail, but the inside, so if you can see, look at what happened. So that was just, you can see how matte, it's so thick right now, and you see how it did all that little pocking and pitting. It's because the glaze was so thick, and I had already thinned it, so I don't know. Anyways, I was, I've been having troubles. This, just, I'll show you what it is. This is a, ugh, did not turn out the way I planned. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, <laughs> but you know, you learn from it. I might as well tell you what it was. I was on another kiln load. So I had played around. I had bought Weeping Plum. That's a uh, Amico Celadon. So on the bottom. So these were, I carved out the little flowers and then I did um, black slip for the center of the flowers. Um, I sometimes add gold to them. Like, here, here's one, this little teacup. So, oh, I don't know if you can see. So that's got some, you can see the gold there. It's so hard to photograph gold. It always looks black. I have tea in it, so I can't move this around too much. But I often do that with my little flowers. So I will carve it and either glaze it. Anyways, oops. So I had added, okay, weeping plum times two on the bottom. It went on really nice. And then on the top, I did fairy rose times two. And then I did indigo rain times two. And it looks like Fairy Rose and Indigo Rain don't like each other at all. It, they just did not. They fought and neither won. <laughs> and then of course the Lavender Mist didn't work out either. So that was, ugh. Sometimes what happens, you know, like you win some, you lose some. So I think I'm gonna add a little bit more water 
to my lavender mist and see if I can thin it out just a wee bit more. And maybe I'll do another test to see. It's always good, you know, that I'm, that I'm just throwing things at. Ooh, that, that's pretty. Okay. I have really wanted to work with purples. Okay, so this money. <laughs> Look at this. Okay. All right, so the purple. Give me a thumbs up if you like this purple. So tell me. Is it just me? <laughs> so then try different colors and refire. Have had success with that. So what do you, so what do you mean, Andrew, uh, Andrea? You want me to add more stuff to that? It's just so, you know, on the inside, if the, the lavender mist is so thick. I was thinking about trying to fire it upside down. I've never had success with that. I had a, a kiln post get fused to a pot once. My nose is running. The garage is very cold. Over pink. Okay. All right. So you think you're saying so put something over top of of this one? Just adding like well like a flux or something. I can try that. Um so this here, okay, yes, yeah, so, all right. I, I'll try it. I mean, it can't hurt because sometimes, you know, if I have space, I'll throw it in the kiln and see what I can, how I can fix the outside, the inside. Yeah, I might try turning it upside down and see what I can get. So this, my friends, is Pottery Supply House. So Pottery Supply House is a pottery supply store in, it's in Oakville, uh, which is on the west, west side of Toronto. Um, they also, I know they have a distributorship in the States. I don't know what the store is called. I think it's under a different name, but they sell the Pottery Supply House clay. Um, but this is one of their glazes. This is called Purple Haze. And I would, my last kill note, I was using it a lot as a liner, but I wanted to see how it would play nice. And I'm loving that. So that's the base glaze. And this, I want to say is amaryllis. Look at the yellow that came out of that. Let me get my, let me get my little sheet so I can tell you exactly what it is. Um, purple Haze. Oh, it is. See, okay. So you can see on my little notes here. So I did purple haze, amaryllis, and flux blossom. Where did the yellow come from? That is insane. It's amazing when you do stuff like this, right? Like, hello. But that, okay, I'm going to be doing a mug with something of that. That's quite fun. And that was just the purple haze. I didn't use quite as much, but that was just the purple haze on its own. But yes, thank you. Okay, I like that one. And this is another test. What? Oh, this, oh, okay, wait, wait, wait. So that's, I think I know what it is. Let me see if I can find the right sheet. Um, yes, here it is. Right, so this one. No, because that's got serious flow on it. Uh-oh. Did I mark something up? Oh. What is it here? No, because okay, I mucked something up in my notes, guys. Oh, I'm liking Amaryllis more and more. I you know what? Amaryllis is I like I don't like it on its own. I really like that combo. <laughs> comes from uh, comes from the Amaryllis. I know, right? Like is I, I I love it. Love it. Love that purple haze and amaryllis. I know, right? This this is really fun. So this again is another purple combo. And I think I made a mistake in my notes because I said flux blossom all over, but I think it was actually cirrus flow because it's the blue. If flux blossom is I think I just did it wrong on my notes. I want to say it's this. Flux blossom times two all over. And then I did a band of purple crystal. Oh, that's right. I did three bands of purple crystal. I did one here, one on the top, and I did one on the back just to see how it would flow. And I left a space kind of like that on either side. Why, I don't know. But so it gave it a kind of a satiny finish. But yes, that's kind of fun. It's got like a almost like a, a blue purple. So this might be fun to play around with in, you know, different contexts and different different placements. I really want, I like purple crystal, but I gotta master it. Uh, because it can be very, very matte, or it can be shiny. <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, all depends. 
So now this one, um, I, I, in my, my pictures, I didn't write down what I added to it. <laughs> I literally, I'm, I was sitting there for like this afternoon going through all of my little pictures going, what did I use? Give me a second, guys. Let's see if I can find it. I, I hate, you know, holding you up. Here it is. So, I literally didn't write it down. So, what I what I had originally put on, I wrote here. So, at the very top was textured turquoise. Then it was um, purple, uh, autumn purple. That's the, uh, the um, spectrum. And the bottom was... And the bottom was at, um, Flux Blossom, one of my favorites. Again, it plays nice with pretty much everything. So I didn't mind the way that these two looked, but the way that the uh, texture turquoise looked on top, it, it just, it was too disconnected. So then I added something. <laughs> so I put, you can see here, I put something, and I, I don't know if I put, I want to say it was Amaryllis, but it could have also been, Cenote. <laughs> oh, you love amaryllis with copper float and sandstone. Ooh, Misty, that sounds fun. Send me a picture, please. Will you do that? Or like, yeah, or you know, if you send me a, a link, you know, uh, Instagram, uh, message me, um, or DM me, or whatever. I would love to see that, and then I could try following you or whatnot. Like, please, I'd love to see that. Um, this is so I don't know what I added, but it was it was either it was either um, amaryllis or cenote, but I like it now. So that was just a little soap bottle. Okay, dokie. Now, oh yes, oh wow. Okay, I have some grinding to do, but that's quite pretty. Whatever happened here? It looks like cenote. Okay, I think so. I think it might have been cenote. Oh, let's see how this did again. Okay, I'm just gonna prime with the wax. Okay. Hello. You can't. You can barely. Like, there's no grinding needed. Hello. Okay, that's the trick. Okay, guys. Wax. I literally used my brush and I coated. I went like that and it dribbled down on each little stilt. And, oh, you've tried this, Misty, before? Or you, you will. You'll send me the pictures. Yes. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you. Um, so, okay. So, hack. That's the way to do it. Now, this one, I'm, um, oh, that's right. This looked like a raw egg yolk in <laughs> the bottom. When I pulled it out of the kiln, it was like, ugh. And I added, hi, Audrey, how are you? I know, you're gonna love that. I am gonna be using stilts for a lot of things with the wax. Um, so I added, this was frosted lemon on the inside, and I had done frosted lemon with um, Archie's base, but I didn't take the Archie's base to the bottom, and uh, we'll have to try the wax hat. Yes, Debbie, you're gonna love it. Now, I'm really excited about that. So whoever sent me, <laughs> thank you, who sent me the link, and I watched the video, and I was like, Okay. Hey, Sarah, I'm good. Oh, good, nice live. Thank you, thank you. You know, it's, it's not easy being out here. <laughs> but I love interacting, because you know what, it's kind of a lonely process, right? You're sitting at home in a basement at my studio, and it's like, uh oh. So I enjoy being with you guys. So this, I'm glad I refired. So this was a success. Look how perfect that is on the inside. Yeah, um, I love the Santa, and the, <laughs> the red is very pretty red. Thank you, Lisa. Yes, so. What was it? What did I say it was? F um, Firebrick, Amico, Firebrick. Three coats. Did I say two? Three coats. It'd be three coats. This would be, um, look at how, because you know what? Because it's second fire, it really ran. So it was um, that sangria, not sangria. See, I don't get them mixed up. Sangria is here. Sangria, autumn, autumn um, purple, and kimchi. So because it got fired again, it ran even more and it's on that speckled clay. So you're getting all that mottling. Okay, yeah. Okay, so I got a little grinding to do on the bottom. It kind of filled in the little chip when I had pulled it off of the cookie before. So, okay, saved. All right. Okay, so this one, 
was a Christmas gift, and it had some spicy language. Oh, it's really rad. And then, so um, I had just done it with underglaze, and I waxed over, but the <laughs> It was very meant and it kind of got ruined because the, the glaze ran and covered the salty language. And um, I, yeah, anyway, so I just added more glaze to cover it all up. <laughs> so it literally is um, texture turquoise and the top and the inside is, um, what's my call it? Uh, Blue Rutile, that's it. And I this was a hand um, hand built mug. I was playing into texture on the bottom. I'm gonna to have to smash it off of here. I did a I did a pulled handle. It was it was again it was a gift. It was supposed to be like a beer stein uh, for a friend of mine, and uh, but otherwise it's gorgeous. So texture turquoise, and um, on the bottom, and then this is the um, what's we call it blue rutile, fired two times. <laughs> it's amazing what happens when you fire it twice, like. You know, so this is the one, the purple haze that I, I grabbed. Oh, okay. <gasps> oh, it's fixed. Yeah. Okay, I added another coat. Okay, yes. Is that not the prettiest thing ever? Oh, wow. I don't know where the yellow is coming from. That's crazy. So what had happened, you can kind of see where I had ground it. You see there's like a, like an area there is the top blue rutile on top of top. Okay, no, so what I had done, I had literally poured, I have, the, I have it just in a brush on, I poured the, the blue, blue rutile inside, poured it out, and then the bottom, see I had salty language here and I had a band here, and then the bottom, I had done texture turquoise, kind of like, you know, a wavy pattern, but it was only two coats of texture turquoise on the bottom because I was worried it was going to run. I did three coats or, or three coats on the outside, and I did the pour on the inside. But it looks like, you know, the way it's flowing like that. Like I know I didn't add texture turquoise inside. It is literally blue rutile on the top. Te this is a bit of texture turquoise here and here, but that is what happened in the, the refire. So it was there was a fair bit because I had just poured the the brush on inside. Um, okay, da, 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 where's this? So this is that purple haze, and I ground out a spot. I then added another coat of purple haze on the inside and on the rim. And I'll show you the picture. I know I have it in here somewhere. And I was trying to remember all the pieces that I had in my kiln, and I apologize if this again is taking. Too long. Um, but I know that was something interesting. I was like, what? When I was looking at my, my oh, oh, here it is. No, that's not it. That's another one that's coming up. And that's the other one that's coming up. Yeah, see, this, there's the, that was what I added later on. So you can see why you're, you're okay, so that's the, oh, sorry, I added, Oops, <laughs> I added cenote and texture turquoise there. That's why we're getting some of that model. So afterwards, the texture turquoise is on the bottom and then I had done cenote in the middle. So I did cenote and then textured turquoise on top. So there you're getting that little bit of extra speckling as followed. So, oops, my bad. So it's always good to have notes, right? Um, is this the, oh, here's the purple. Okay, so. So when I pulled it out, so this is the first, what it looked like when I glazed it and put it in. It was purple haze on the inside, a pour. So even though it's a brush on, I pour it because I'm, I'm too lazy. Um, and then I did it slightly on the rim. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see in the photo, there's like a, you see like a little like of a, a bubble of, or bulging, glaze and that was the purple haze and then I did a band it says fire opal one and a half inch down the rim times two so I did one and a half inch down was fire opal which you can kind of make out here but I did one and a half inch down about there is fire opal and then I did flux blossom times three on the outside all over it and then when I refired it 
I just added another coat of the Purple Haze. So again, that's Pottery Supply House Purple Haze. And it, oh, that is spectacular. There's some peach in here too. That's interesting. Um, I, I, I guess you, you guys are able to see it good, right? Without too much glare. Maybe that's better if I zoom it like that, right? Look at that color. Oh, ooh, okay. That's fun. That's fun. Okay, now, we only a couple left in here. This one, ooh, okay. So I glazed the bottoms of this. So let's see how it worked. So I glazed the bottoms this time uh, when I refired. So this one is originally, this is what it looked like. Thank you for the before picks and all the combos. Oh, awkward. I'm so glad you do like it. I figured it would kind of help, right? So this is what it looked like at the beginning. So what I did was it was sunset pink on the bottom. So I did sunset pink on the bottom Ooh, here. And then I did a band of sangria over the sunset pink. And then it says halfway up to a quarter inch from the rim. So I literally sangria went from over the, the sunset, um, sunset pink, which is a coyote glaze, but you can see some that I left some of the sunset pink open on the bottom. So it's almost like a band in the middle. And I did that times three, it said. So, so sangria times three, and then it said wide band of flex blossom times two. So then I went over top of that with flex blossom. Inside and rim is the purple haze times two. And then when I refired it, I added on the bottom here, I added sangria. And it's hard to say how many coats because I'm adding it and because it goes on thinner because it's already porous, it's a bit tricky. So I did about maybe two or three more coats, but it's not as thick as a coat when you're putting it on a, a bisque a bisque uh, piece. This is vitrified, so it's very thin. So anyways, I added uh, sangria and then I added more of the purple, purple haze. Oh, oh, and I put it on the bottom. This is sangria on the bottom. Let's see, this is the test. How did it do? Oh. Okay, okay, you know what? It had split before and I was hoping, oh, I was hoping it would hide the split, <laughs> which it kind of did, but that can sometimes happen. It did, it had cracked bef before this last fire, but you know what? Okay, so this one needs a bit of grinding. It looks pretty darn good on the bottom. Okay, so that's the only, that one and that one, but I will dremel that out. And the inside, wow. Okay, there's still a spot, but it's sealed. So that there, I just hurt my finger, I cut myself. Um, that is a little, there's like a, it's like a bump, but it's, it's sealed. So it's perfectly fine. Look at that. I just love that purple haze. Look at that color. Oh, so nice. Anyways, that is, I don't know. I think it's pretty dynamite. What do you guys think? Is that kind of, is that too loud? <laughs> is it too much? Should I add gold or is it enough? <laughs> But I like, I glaze the bottom. I don't usually do that. So that's kind of fun. Oops, sorry about the blood on my finger. That was from the uh, cookie. So this guy is, okay, so is this one. So it came out, let's see. Oh, right, it had to, I grinded a little spot. Oh, I'm, let's get some Kleenex on my finger. So you don't have to look at my little nugget there. Okay, so. This is what it looked like when it first went in. So I did Cirrus Flow, bottom two thirds times three. So I did all of this with Cirrus Flow. Then I did Cenote over the Cirrus Flow times two. And then I did Texture Turquoise inside. I poured it. So it was the brush on that I poured. And, and then I did it dribbly on the rim. You can see that it's like blah, 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 dribbly. And so you're seeing on the rim there, it's Cirrus Flow and the Texture Turquoise. Then when I put it back in the kiln, because I didn't like the foot, I didn't like this white foot sticking out, but it was like a sore thumb. So I added more of the Cenote and 
So I just added cenote. So that's what it looked like when it came out, which looks pretty, but you can see there, I already put the cenote on the bottom, but I really like the overall look of the glaze combo. And then I added cenote and I added um, this. Oh, wow, we, okay. And I had to do a little tiny fleck in the bottom with some texture turquoise as well. That came out perfect. Look at that mirror finish. Look at that mirror finish. <gasps> oh, oh, one little, oh my goodness. Look at me bleeding here. Sorry. I'm cold, so nothing, nothing is sealing up. Look at that. Okay, so there's what, you know what? That's smooth. That doesn't bother me. I would sell it like that because it's smooth. It just looks like, like, you know, melted milkshake. Oh, what do you guys think of that with the cenote? <gasps> And then I did the did it on the bottom, and that came out perfectly. Oh, look it! I dare you to find the little the little things on the bottom. Okay, that's kind of fun. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> so pretty. Okay, these are gonna be going up on my website soon. Okay. See, I don't just I don't just do pink. <laughs> Though it's one, it is my favorite. All right, one last one in here. Okay, I did, again, I added glaze to the bottom. Oh, okay, it, it, yes. Okay, so this thing's a winner, winner, winner. Only one little spot to kind of grind out. Love your heart bottles, thank you. <laughs> I know, it was, this, this, it was just something fun, and, and, uh, and that was, like I said, one of those MKM rollers. That's sangria on the bottom, and then I, look at that, I got two giant pinnings there. I didn't like the way this, this one was going. So it was, this is what it looked like when it first, when I first fired it or first glazed it, rather complicated. So blue, blue rutile pour on the inside. Um, and then I said, uh, um, the rim times three, band of fire opal times two, oh, sorry, fire opal two inch times one. Texture turquoise times three, um, just one, a half inch below the rim, two inch band in the middle. Wow, this is complicated. <laughs> and then I've got fire opal was on the bottom and then between the texture turquoise, fire opal, I did blue rutile. So lots of different layerings there. Um, and then, was there more? Sometimes I did more, like the inside. I don't know if there's more. Um, and so that's what it looked like, even on the inside. So that was what it did look like. And now I added more, I added sangria on top of the uh, fire opal. Um, and then I ended up glazing the bottom. I, did, I hated the look of this big white band here. So it works with those little raised cookies. It just, the glazes didn't like being refired. So retro tie dye. <laughs> it totally is. Oh, that's such a great, that's a great definition there. <laughs> But too bad for those little guys. The inside's perfect. Oh wow, look at that. That's I'm I'm really having fun with blue retail. Like I'm I'm liking when I have like a, a, a bright pink on the outside, maybe throwing a blue on the inside, just for some fun, you know. So I promised I was gonna show you a couple other goodies. Uh, so this came in another kiln load, and just because I did think they were they were they were pretty, and you might get some use out of them. Isn't that fun? So this was this. I just, that, that, that was the problem was the inside and that was that lavender mist. It's, it's so thick that it really wrecked the bottom. So the outside is stellar and brilliant. Um, and that was literally soft red on the top. Thank you, Nat from Mud Magic for making me buy that one. That was you. you. You were the first to mention it to me back in the summer and it took me a while to go get it and I got it and I'm loving it. So this is soft red. And then I put Frosted Lemon was on the bottom, overlapped, and then I did a band of sangria. So between the um, soft red and the um, yellow there, the Frosted Lemon, and then a band. And look at the purples that came out of that. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> That's, that was fun. So other than the bottom, that was kind of suck. Uh, you're never disappointed. Always excited for your... Okay. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet, Andrea. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm glad I, I, you know, I'm out here and I'm doing it and I'm glad you're, you're enjoying this little gem. 
I thought it was really cute little bowl. So I did this and I know this is going on long. It's almost an hour video. Holy cow, guys. So I did Flex Blossom times two inside and rim a quarter inch. So that's the sangria and then a band of blue rutile. Look at that. And then this is just the amaryllis and the pom pom. <laughs> you like that, eh? <laughs> it's artificial. It's not a real fur, <laughs> it, but it's, <laughs> I know I got like, I'm Canadian. Well, let me just get rid of this. This is too tight in here. <laughs> I'm Canadian, right? <laughs> so Canadian, eh? There we are. So I really love Segri on its own. And this is on um, Laguna 608. I love that clay. It's a little rough on the hands to get used to, but uh, that's a pretty combo. So that one. And then I thought you might like this guy. I did put through some items and I had some of the white gold luster, which I think is quite pretty. These were some of those holiday little guys that I had. Um, I'm not going to bore you with them, but this little gem. <laughs> is that not pretty? So and that's the inside. That's blue rutil. And the outside is, okay, so this is, um, oh my God, Plainsman Clay, M390, one of my favorites. It's such a deep burgundy clay. Um, and then I dipped it in my power turquoise and then um, it splashed inside a little bit. So that's what, that's power turquoise. It got on there. And then when I put the blue root heel, that's the result I got. And then the outside is just the power turquoise. You get a little bit of that blue rutile combo. And that's what I got. She's like, <laughs> Sarah keeps pulling fabulous stuff out. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, was, I was really thrilled with like some of these goodies, right? So, so pretty. I was debating, now let me ask you guys, should I leave it like this or should I put gold luster on the rim? <laughs> Tell me, what do I do? Leave it or gold luster on the rim? Curious, what you think? Um, and then this guy, what, oh, this was interesting too. I still have more things I need to get in the, in the kiln. So this little guy, another power turquoise. So it was power turquoise, dip on the bottom. So it's, it's, a, it's a little planter. So I just literally stuck it in the bottom and so of course it lays the inside. That was just one coat of the um, Cirrus Flow or Cyrus Flow. And leave it, okay, leave it. We got one for leave it. Leave it, two for leave it, okay. I'm glad I asked. <laughs> leave it, all right, three out of three. I guess I'm leaving it. <laughs> Thank you, I'm glad you guys shared that with me because <laughs> all four, okay, yeah. I'm leaving it, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so the outside is, River Birch, top two thirds, um, times two. And then I did Blue Midnight, heavy on the rim. And then what did I say? And blobs of texture turquoise over the Blue Midnight. Okay, so literally, oh, another Debbie? All right, leave it. So River Birch and on the rim is uh, texture turquoise and Blue Midnight. So that's kind of a fun little, it's just a small little planter. I see this like maybe in a, um, a macrame type, Thing hanging a small plant in there would be kind of cute but that was they're just I find I do these things for some glazing things uh, like to test it out I was playing around I'm so bummed out with this so I was doing the transfers and I did all of these fun little pink flamingos but the glaze went down way too far it just ran I put... Bummer. anyways it's perfect otherwise but it just doesn't look right so more mugs for me. <laughs> so, oh well. So that's it, guys. That's it. Um, lots of goodies. I hope I was able to give you some ideas. And if you did, thank you. Oh, which, which you like? Oh, you like it that way, Audrey? I know it's cute, but I, I just couldn't sell it like that. Like, I just feel that it just went too, it just went too far. Um, I don't mind sometimes with when it overlaps some of my transfers, like, I have one, my, my little, my mugs that I, I put up on my website with 
all the my transfers like my books mugs they all everything sold i still have my owls oh thank you for sharing um for shining as brightly as your pots oh wow <laughs> thank you oh my god thank you debbie thank you kara i really appreciate it. thank you thank you so much sandra i i do it for you guys and i appreciate all the love that you guys provide and the, the you know the, the back and forth with the energy i i need it and i appreciate that because when you're out here you kind of want to make sure you're not just talking to yourself so i will end it here so that i'm not taking up because look at 65 minutes wow can i talk <laughs> i love you guys thank you and if you haven't hit that like button hit that subscribe button you know share it i appreciate it i love you until next time, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, Happy all the holidays. I know I think we've got Diwali, all kinds of things coming up. Happy, happy, happy. Take good care, be safe, and I'm going to see, I might get right back in again for another one. You're on the right path. Thank you. I'm going to try to get another one in, another video in before, before the end of the year, so you might just see me again. Thank you, Andrew. Merry Christmas. Uh, always enjoy the kiln openings. Thank you, Misty. Thank you. Again. Love you guys. Take care. Bye. Bye. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> Bye. Happy holidays, Debbie.